One of the reasons uh, in the early days, one of my criticisms of Riot's broadcast was, you know, because I was working for OGN. OGN knows how to make a sports entertainment yes. product. They know how to build personalities because they weren't a developer and their entire livelihood depended on the storylines and making stars out of players and all of this other stuff. One of my criticisms that made Riot angry was one of the things that they used to do on their production. Would they, ha they would have these big LED walls like behind the players like you see, right? And they would have like in a little box at the front, the player's picture. And then they'd just be like, Lulu, 30 feet behind them. I'm like, but really? Like you're going to put the giant Lulu there, but we're not going to like put the players on the background so that we can start building these stars. So all I saw was marketing of the game which i had to i mean it's this is one of the reasons why it's so terrible right for monty the joke is this if riot recreated the nfl they'd have just called him number 18 for the patriots yeah. not tom brady you know what i <laughs> exactly. mean like that's that's the world they would have created yeah, and they would have they would have created a generic quarterback character and then brad broadcast the quarterback character you know and everyone who plays quarterback would have jimmy quarterback smith character. the quarterback yeah. character yeah. and jimmy yeah. smith would just be a huge picture of like cartoon jimmy jimmy smith and then like tom brady's face like at the bottom i mean i had to deal with the same shit in overwatch league where literally the front of every broadcast was this like mashup video of a bunch of the characters from overwatch in the t in the skins of the teams and i was like why are you guys showing the characters of the teams and the skins instead of showing the most famous players from all of the teams? Like, I, I don't know what happens in these meetings where these decisions are made. Well, you know what? You, you do know the answer to that because you've seen the contracts that I've seen, you know, and 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 all of the things they wanted from the players, you know, like they they reserved the rights to do whatever with, with your image. They uh, even in the recent contracts, the, the last bunch that I saw. They, Shout out uh, Team Liquid for being the ones to do that first one, like in perpetuity across the yeah. known universe. Like in perpetuity across the known so universe. Because it just makes you think they're on some interstellar shit in like, the future, you know. Like. No, no I, I actually as well, though, I, apparently I, I heard that that comes from a particular lawyer that also does entertainment contracts where the same verbiage is, is used which is crazy but whatever the um you know but like with, with the riot games contracts for the players you know it was all fixated on but what if they leave the league and play another game and what if they play what if they have their own streams and they play other games from competitors on streams we don't want that you know they did it explicitly with with the story that broke on on game as you referenced earlier but they're still saying there's certain things that you can't do you know on your personal stream and be in this league overwatch league is doing the same stuff to their players and the bottom line is there is this absolute terror from games developers that if you have an individual that overshadows your league the the partner teams in the league you're going to be beholden to them in some way right and obviously it took riot years to agree to a players association it, the one that they've got doesn't really seem to have any teeth loads of little weird fucked up conflict interests in that i know it's going through some restructuring and they're bringing in people but you haven't really heard of any big sort of contentious pushback on any of this stuff by the way from the players association but anyway you know that's the whole reason why and i also understand it because you know and i won't name any names but let's say you had a player that did something or was associated with something that was you know unbelievably unsavory and let's say he was your like season mvp and you'd immortalized them in the game in some way and then that happens obviously you've got a problem there you've got a really bad optics problem and if you're an american company optics has to go even above dollars and cents these days so uh, you know i, I totally I mean, it, it, it makes sense if you just understand who riot are they don't want the players to actually be bigger than what they're trying to sell to the kids and yeah it's like you said we did elsia shouldn't be in this situation you know even like even like knockoff fucking players that probably no one like really remembers, like you know the odd one and stuff like that. These guys used to get fifty k, fifty thousand views on Twitch at a yeah. time, and fifty thousand views was insane. 
It was insane. It was like, you know, the, the, holy shit, 50,000 people watching a guy play a video game. And somehow Riot Games chose not to, for their long-term strategy, not to utilize the model of players first, come and see all the best players. Meanwhile, you contrast that with LCK and all the coverage around Faker and all these, like, legends in the game. You know, how many, how many documentaries has been made about that guy? Obviously, tons. How much content has been made around that guy? Is it his last season? Is he going to do this? Is he going to do that? You, you know, he's like, he became the face of of Korean League of Legends. That can only happen in that region because there's power structures that can push back at Riot's short, you know, short-sighted bullshit. I mean, again, they've had like the world's biggest head start you could ever dream of to the extent that you had people like fucking, you know, I'm sure nice enough people, but... Dyrus and the odd one are probably two of the most boring humans on the planet. And as Richard said, they were streaming to fucking like 20k, 30k, 50k, yeah. like on the regular yeah, back in the by, day. By no means, like, not, even, not even the most charismatic individuals you could reach out for. Like, fact, you know, the least Dyrus was lo beloved because of his sort of shy yes. demeanor, right? Yeah, now the cunt streams to 50 viewers playing Fall Guys or whatever. Like, you know, it's it's mental. Like, and and you consider what the position they're in now and the continued attitude they have towards not being kingmakers by the way also with the casting with production and why Overly, for example doesn't work in na spoiler it wasn't because no one was watching their content like that was actually one of the few things left propping it up like wasn't for me i thought it was horrendous and cringe and i hate the forced narrative that anime and esports are married together but whatever it got views didn't <laughs> it and why would you fire that person why wouldn't you just fully lean into that and be like holy shit okay sure maybe it's a slight bastardization of the product or whatever but it gets views it, it drives interest and to just always whenever so it's like the person you can't help the person who doesn't want to be helped and every time it's like yes it's working right it's getting better maybe they're going to be nursed back to full health it's like get away from me i don't want these pills anymore and they throw them out the window and it's just rinse and repeat all the time and now it, we're even left in a scenario where i look at the lcs and it's so barren of interest because of the lack of intrigue and because of the lack of uh, storylines that are being created around it. I genuinely don't know where I'd actually start. Like, I'm sure if I sat down and thought about it, I could, you know, contrive something. But the point is, you had all these pieces. You had the perfect chessboard in front of you and you fucking checkmated yourself, didn't you? Like, it's unbelievable. So... Yeah, again, the as fucking I board and said chess is shit. <laughs> That's what it actually did. <laughs> if you think <laughs> about it, yeah. Yeah. Turned, turned it over. They got used... one of those ones from uh, Toys R Us. You're like, well, like you're saying, the by back. the way, about all the advantages, they never used a single one. Like, I'll give you one that, in hindsight, I think is mental now. So, you know, this season, Pioshik, who is a world champion, is going to LCS to play for Team Liquid, right? Years and years ago, this happened. It was only one year removed. Piglet, who'd won the Season 3 World Championship in Season 5, played in the LCS. They never even thought of something like, maybe do a campaign in Korea, like, want to watch Piglet still? He's in it. There was never even anything like that. that was, these ideas, as far as I know, never even went on a chalkboard somewhere to be dismissed. Like, they didn't even have any foresight. And part of the reason why it's been referenced earlier is that Riot stupidly went down this track for, I'm going to say, what, like a solid five, six years, where they even used to publicly say... We don't make money from eSports. It's not about making money. You know, it's just a thing. That just... And then the joke is, eventually, the Chinese fucking lords of their, like, basically the people who own them and hold all the purse strings were like, wait a minute. You're not ruthlessly exploiting every commercial element of a business. Like, you are aware we're Chinese, right? And then it was like game over. And now, obviously, they're going to have to start fixing it. But it's too late. That's, like I said, the golden goose is dead. The horse has bolted. Like, the fucking house has burned down. And everyone's like, how can we get back to that old stately manner? It's, like, it's over. It's over, guys. In fact, well, I'll you... even say this one. Because being as only Monty's American in here, I'll just do my little five-second <laughs> comment I always like to make about this topic. Because obviously on talk shows, endlessly, we have these discussions. How do we fix LCS? How do we fix NA? How do we get NA to be better at Worlds? I'll just say what I always say. I'm not American. I don't give a fuck, and I don't need to give a fuck. You know what? You know when we say, LEC's doing great. That's great then. See ya. Enjoy your, you can make your old show, guys, where you save LCS. I don't care about saving LCS anymore. Like, that's actually a boring topic to me. Because no, at this me point too, in man. time, 
At this point in time, the topic basically is, this is giving me mad flashback triggers. The topic really, if we were to rephrase it is, how do I get a cool idea that I'm going to come up with for free to try and give to Riot, a company that actively despises me and has never given me any acknowledgement or recognition in order to make loads of team owners who themselves put themselves in this situation and repeatedly went along with every bullshit decision Riot made, never daring to speak out publicly in case Riot bashes them, you moron. If the standard is talking about paddling, that's a paddling, then you better start talking about it because you can never talk about anything. You idiot, you can never make any change. So I'm supposed to do all that. And at the end, what's the outcome? Maybe Reggie can make another 200 million. Like, no thanks. You know what? You're on your own. See ya. I'm getting the bus. I'm off to LEC. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I'm just in a put up or shut up moment, right? Like, what 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 has the LCS done for me? Never done anything international internationally interesting. You have to remember that my entire league casting career was casting what was unquestionably the best region in the world while I was there. It's like, you guys were like, I feel like NA fans were like gaslighting me. They're like, yeah, you are watching Major League Baseball, but have you seen the Japanese Baseball League? I'm like, motherfucker, I don't care. Like, I don't care about that. And so... I mean, I was I was never super invested in it outside of talking about it and watching the games because, again, as I've said a million times, you guys, the fans, made me do it because you want to hear me talking about it. That's the only reason I do it. It's not because I want to talk about it. It's not because I want to spend my time that way. So be competitive internationally. That will make me care. How about you move away from the garbage format that you've been running for many years, which makes it even more boring somehow. So credit, applause to LEC for changing some of this stuff up. But the thing about LCS, and all of, here's the other thing about LCS. Everybody's like, well, I don't, all the fans are like, I don't know why they don't switch to LCK and do two best of threes five days a week. It's like, the viewership isn't there, guys. Where does that money come from? It's so expensive to add more broadcast days in LA because every other day you add is another day rate for the unionized freelancers that live in Los Angeles that you have to pay good rates to because if you don't, they're just going to fuck off and do another TV show. They're going to go to the, a different live broadcast. It's not a shortage of entertainment work in Los Angeles, guys. So there's a minimum threshold that you have to hit that is vastly more expensive than almost any other place on the planet earth like why is it in la never had to be here right so when we talk about that it's like if this was going gangbusters if you saw increased viewership like lec there would be a justification well our fan base wants more we think we can get even more viewership with this but in in a in an audience decline yeah. You can't justify those additional expenses. So you've got two days to work with, but they don't even make changes there. And in fact, here's something we haven't even talked about yet. They just took the LCS lock-in tournament and took it out behind the shed and shot it and didn't even say anything about it. It has been going on for the last couple of years. And yeah, there were visa issues coming in. We didn't really get to see full rosters, but it was kind of fun, honestly, to have a tournament at the start of the season. But when they announced things, they didn't even say anything. They didn't even tell us what happened to it. Mm. They didn't explain where it went this year. Where is it? Riot, say something, Bam, please. Bamtech, Bamtech all over again. Like they just say <laughs> like, la 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 and just just carry on and hope that it's Riot right Games. They'll do anything to avoid publicly saying we made a mistake or maybe we misjudged something or this isn't working. Like they just go look it up. Like. It, it, the the only time I think they've ever been explicit in their failures was when a court mandated they had to say that as part of a fucking <laughs> settlement agreement. That's who Riot Games are. They be, truly believe they're fucking infallible. I've been saying that ever since I came across the very first red t-shirt wearing losers at an after party when they just suddenly infiltrated esports spaces overnight. Like, oh, who are these guys? Like, who are these guys? Oh, they're all dickheads, are they? Amazing. Love that. So, yeah, I mean, it's just who they are to the core. Like, you know, they, 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 they it's, it, it's like, I don't know, man. They should open up a fucking league in North Korea because they're on that shit. Like the glorious leader, Mark Merrill, <laughs> never makes mistakes. You remember when he invented the light bulb in, you know, and it's just like just rewritten history completely. When if you look at what the esports product is that they fucking created, the, the, their failures are almost unthinkable. They're almost unthinkable. Like, like Activision Blizzard 
I don't know. I mean, you know, that that they're just they're just a joke at this stage. Can't wait for Microsoft to install some competent executives as part of that merger, you know, when it goes through. But you know, like Riot Games had the hottest product in esports with the highest production value with some of the most talented people willing to work with them almost inexplicably not to mention people on the periphery that gave them added value to their league for free streamers journalists pundits people who do investigative reporting keep everyone honest like how much bullshit have i claimed up for them but never mentioned my name in any of the announcements by the way so they had the fucking dream and they fucked it up you know like it's 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 actually incredible it's not going to be as spectacular a failure as the overwatch league where that is going to you know it's shot up and it's come back down to earth and it's going to create it within like six years like cgs or something but their constant underutilization of everything they had going in their favor i think when you look at it long term you can look at what they've done with lcs and essentially and, and maybe league of legends broadly and say you know, can esports ever succeed if you have all these advantages and still ultimately fall short? Well, yeah, what you can do is you By can... the way, I'll also say as well, what does trigger me about this convo is the same thing I've had the problem with the entire time in League of Legends. I've always said it to Monty. From 2014, when we began summoning insight, here's how it goes. It's like, I say something like, what about double a limb? Because I've, I've, at this point, I'm... 13 years into esports and everyone goes, well, I don't know if it'd work and what would happen with the law. It's all like we're talking about some abstract, you know, like astrophysics, like not something that's real that's going on. Like, no, no, look over there in that room. No, I don't see anything. It doesn't seem like anything to me, like some fucking Westworld shit, right? When they do this for years and years, do you want to know what one of the number one justifications were for the BO1 format, for the league split format, for the team house, was the viewership. It was the fucking... Something totally unrelated, as far as I can tell, to any of those details. Well, the joke is, now that the viewership goes down, they follow their own stupid logic and they're just going to change all the format. You should have done that years ago. You change the format if the format makes sense, not based on, like, well, don't rock the boat, things are all right now. Like, that's why it's so wacky. They did underachieve. They actually, it's like we say, they, look, they still did well, if it's an absolute sense, compared to every other eSport. But yeah, yes, the point everyone is... everyone else failed more. Yeah, yeah, they were basically in Formula One with, like, a top three car and they finished seventh and were like, well, it's not last. Like, well, that's terrible expectation wise, though, isn't it? Yeah, but I, I think the big, the one thing that should come out of this, which would be good, at least I think from most of our perspectives, is now like the LEC owners should see it as having sort of ultimate power in terms of leverage when it comes to decision making and pressuring Riot for things that they want in Western League of Legends. L LCS seems like it's kind of on its last legs and it's not going to get better anytime soon. And you are basically carrying the Western viewership and the Western pool of people, which is obviously still astronomically large and has massive room to grow. If you look at the, I know Riot never like publish any more the actual figures. It's the same reason why they won't uh, sort of guarantee to increase prize pools year on year because they're worried that it will be perceived as in any given year that it's going down or whatever. But the game itself is actually still growing in popularity if you sort of go country by country, especially in Eastern Europe. And obviously it's easy to get a cheap PC to play the game on and all the rest of it. So in theory, the EU owners should now be looking at this and thinking, oh, well, all the fucking kings in na your jack etienne's your reggie's whatever these guys are trying to come over and get a share of our shit this is the time where we should be making demands and we should be pushing to get the things that we actually yeah. want because i can still remember a fucking time when every single not every off season every single fucking riot meeting we're having to fight for please don't make a rule so every single european player can go over to na please don't just fully open the import rule so we just lose everything overnight because they can pay way more than we can and spoiler, by the way, even with budget, which was always the thing, right? Haha, <laughs> and the retirement home. That's going to dry up sooner rather than later. More than half the teams in LCS oh, yes. massively cut their budget. Only FlyQuest, because they got a series round of investment beforehand, have increased their budget. EG are like kind of in a similar echelon, but still decreased budget. And I believe every single other team other than possibly Liquid because of the implications of bringing over. Um, no, you know, they, still, they, they still have a smaller budget for it, sure than they Yeah, they, they, sure. like across the board. And that is going to, it's going to continue 
continue to trend in that direction. And if we're funneling everything to Europe, including the viewership and even the, the viewership from NA now being largely European, although again, as Monty said, spoiler, it always was. That is actually the man on the moon mean. It really, it always was, as far as I know. It was always uh, Europeans. <laughs> yeah, it was all, it always was. It was always Europeans. It's always like, has been. <laughs> it's going to be a case that uh, you're going to actually end up probably being able to get more money other than like one random sort of uh, trust fund team or whatever in, in North America. You just get more money from staying in Europe. And when that happens, by the way, then NA's in serious trouble. When Europe becomes a region as well, where it's we get to bring over the fucking world championship Korean players and not someone who won it back in the day with like fucking Poo Mandu or some shit, right? Like you actually get to bring over or some like- is Pioshik. I'm just gonna put that Right, there. yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> it, oh, yeah, who's not Pio who was actually like a good player on his team or whatever, that's gonna be Europe from now on in, or maybe not now on in, but you know, you can see the forest through the trees at this point, right? So yeah, NA is having so few things going for well, it right now. And look, even as I, I I'm yeah, excited, man. Like I said, the like you're saying, it's a prove it year for LCS, right? They clearly are making big changes to the way that they're doing things, which I said, continuing to do the same thing with the decline in viewership would have been insane. So I'm glad to see them doing things. And I hope that they can continue. I think the broadcast has been improving in quality over the last year, especially compared to, I mean, it was like tragically bad in terms of, of broadcast quality during the pandemic, but it has gotten oh, a lot yeah. better. But like, the thing is that we've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of improvement there. And the thing that made LEC successful was it spinning off into its own unique universe and figuring out what its strengths were and then doing a great job of telling player stories and continuing to iterate, in my opinion, in a good way. It is hard for me to say year over year that the LCS or LEC hasn't gotten better every year in some way, shape or form. It has continued to improve. I cannot say that about LCS. It really went into decline there for a while. Like By the way, 2018 Monty, through like 2021 was pretty shit. For yeah, LCS, but, but to to your point, what what is like uh, absolutely mind blowing? It was at the time, and it is now. Uh, looking back on it as well, that pandemic year when, keep in mind, the European LE of uh, LCS or what is now LEC is in Berlin. The vast, vast, vast majority of players that play in that league, in fact, bar like two I can think of, are not German. You are, to and you're also dealing with Brexit as well. And there were the, you know, your Alfaris and Cajuls at the time or whatever. Like, it's not that easy to get everyone during a pandemic in Berlin to play out a series and go fucking watch those productions from LEC. They didn't miss a fucking beat, other than the the. the players not physically being there wearing masks or whatever they just weren't there the whole broadcast team was they did all the quarantine protocols that they had to do or whatever and basically the product was as good as you could possibly humanly have expected and then contrast that and go and watch one of those broadcasts from i could the not alien believe it dome. The alien it's dome it's like so the first ones were like Dash and Prolly in their underwear with their fucking webcams on. Like, for, like what are we doing? You're you're in the California, man. You no no one has to move country or anything, barring like a couple of uh, Korean. I, by the way, maybe. I'm just gonna I'm right. gonna put this out there for people. As somebody who literally ran a tournament called Flashpoint in Los Angeles during the first month of the pandemic, LA never by law had to shut down productions ever so it was always an option yep. that, that was, was one an of option. the that was one of the biggest fumbles i've i've seen in esports like considering you know when you do resources versus ex, uh, with expectation versus reality like that was pathetic that was like some northern arena we are the third party of the third party streaming lfl for like fucking Czechoslovakians or whatever. Like, it was insanely insane how bad that production quality was. So, like, my goodness. But, but the point I'm making is, like, they're clearly taking risks. They have to take risks to change something. I'm hoping they continue to take these risks. I'm disappointed that no risks were taken in terms of the format. But in terms of the broadcast, let's put up or shut up, LCS. Like, let's see you be interesting on broadcast. Let's see you put out some competitive teams that can actually do damage on a world stage. If these things happen, I think LCS has a chance to grow again, but it's about having good leadership and good vision, which they have lacked and making those shifts. There's a lot to learn from LEC, I think.
I had one. Wait, another thing I would just throw in Sorry, there if we're going to go close on. up the LCS topic and move to yeah. some other things. One other thing as well, Monty, that I think people are really missing. This just shows like, I've been saying this recently, probably the most boring thing, because it actually makes me realize when people like us quit, it's just over. It's like in the modern day, it's not even that people don't get the facts and the information. They have to actually, like a little child, have it mashed up and then be fed to them, spoon fed one spoon at a time. And now open up. Listen, this is going to be something interesting about it. They can't even put the info together themselves. So, you know, everyone at the moment's like obviously celebrating the career of Freak and the fact that he won't be on LCS anymore. Guys, who the fuck does the LCS have left? They again, they also had a golden generation of talent, by the way, that mm -hmm. they've let, they've run to the absolute limits. And now you've got people like Jack maybe like partly still do it. And that's about, and then you've got what, Emily, and that's it. Like, this is a joke. There's another thing. Because Riot, it's a classic Riot topic, has fucked with talent so much. Who are they left with? Like, the joke should be this. Since the money's only gone up, and in theory, I know the viewership hasn't, but the opportunity should have gotten bigger and bigger, LCS broadcast should be the absolute best broadcast in the English-speaking world, logically. It's the worst. Which, by definition, of course. Like, the joke is, as we're saying there, you could even argue there are actually ERL broadcasts not always English language ones that are better because those are people hooked into the scene. That is the guy you should hire. The joke is because there's no Riot Global in your way, they can just actually get real people. Like, I can't believe that... The Riot, there's another thing Riot absolutely just, like, gave up the fucking lead and gave away. See more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.